Hi everybody and welcome to my studio. I'm Diane and today we're going to paint a beautiful cute white rabbit just in time as a last minute idea for Easter. And I'm just doing the sketch here, um, getting ready to do the painting. If you're not too confident with your own sketching abilities, then this sketch is available for you to download for free on my website at dianeanton.com. So after you've watched the video, just head on over there and you will be able to find it there to download for free, which will get you started so you don't have to spend too much time worrying about the drawing. Um, okay, so for this painting, which I'm going to continue to sketch while I tell you these, uh, these pieces of information, for this painting I'm going to use uh, five colours, which will be cobalt blue, uh, sap green, lemon yellow, quinacridone gold and potter's pink. If you don't have potter's pink and you're interested in painting flowers and animals, I suggest you try to get hold of a tube of it. I'll put a link below in the description because it's a very handy colour, it comes in handy for lots of things, I use it a lot, I've only just started to use it, but it is definitely a benefit to my palette, and uh, you can get a tube of that for about $9-$10 or something, so it's not a massive investment. Um, if you don't have Potter's Pink and you want to go ahead and paint this, of course you can, no problem, you could either use Permanent Rose, instead which you can mix with cobalt blue to get a nice pale lilac or you could use for example any light brown well diluted down so for example um, raw umber or van dyke brown or something like that would do in replacement for the pink. Apart from that you need a sheet of paper, um, a lightweight watercolour paper will do a heavyweight will obviously do and you could even do this painting on on cartridge paper if you tape it down first as I have done. This is only 90 pound paper, it's not very heavy and it doesn't need stretching although it, it can be stretched and it's wonderful to paint on when it is stretched so if you want to find out how to stretch your paper to make the most of it go ahead and uh, look at my video on paper stretching, why to do it and how which is up here on YouTube. Okay, so now we're ready to start painting and of course the first thing I'm going to do is start with the eye and for that of course you do need a tiny touch of either black or um, neutral tint or Payne's grey um, and I'm just putting in the eye first of all so that my little bunny rabbit has got a bit of character as we get started with the painting. So just painting a, a semicircle there and uh, I'm going to fill that in make it into a circle, remembering to leave a tiny space for the light in the eye. And the, the shape of the eye and the position of the eye are quite important as far as getting the character of the bunny are concerned. Um, animals like this tend to have their eyes set fairly high up and right round to the side. Um, unlike birds which tend to have their eyes much nearer to their beaks. Um, but uh, So it's a delicate operation starting with the eye but it's probably best. And now I'm coming in with some very dilute cobalt blue and I'm starting to paint the inside of the ears. Now <clears throat> this painting is going to be very light, it's a white rabbit, <coughs> excuse me, so we're just painting in the shadows, we're not going to try and paint the fur and the technique I'm going to use here is something which is called negative painting. So apart from painting in the shadows on the actual fur itself, I'm going to be making the rabbit stand out by painting behind it, by basically shaping the rabbit with the, the greenery in which he's sitting. So this stage where I'm putting in the shadows is uh, going to look very light and very delicate but he will stand out as a white rabbit by the time we get to the end. So uh, I'm just going around his back leg here and uh, putting a little bit of shadow where his leg meets his body and I'm still using very pale um, cobalt blue sometimes with a little touch of um, potter's pink in it just to vary it a little bit and uh, putting it on very lightly and 
I'll come back and reinforce these shadows later on once the first layer has dried. And there's the potter's pink going in. Um, because obviously as it dries it will fade back quite a bit as watercolour always does. Bit of shadow under his jawline there to give his head some shape. And a little bit underneath him, but the main shape of the rabbit, you'll be surprised, is going to come from, from behind. I'm just painting in his nose here, using a little bit of grey to give his nose some shape and his mouth. And because this is quite thin paper, it's drying, and I'm using very light washes here to, um, to do the first stage. So it's drying quite quickly. It's also quite a warm day today, so... And I've decided with my drawing, I'm going to have him sitting in a bed of dandelions. So I've come back in now with some lemon yellow and I'm just painting some rough dandelion shapes here um, at the, in, in front of him and um, just very roughly, not going for any detail here, just an impression and I'm going to put one or two behind him as well. And now I'm mixing some sap green and I'm going to do the dandelion leaves. And dandelion leaves have a, a kind of heavily serrated edge, they're quite toothed. So some kind of jagged leaf here, not, um, not particularly important details, just the impression of greenery. So one layer of sap green and then coming in, dropping in a little bit more colour, letting it, um, letting it uh, mingle on the paper. It's very important, I think, to do most of your paint mixing actually on the paper rather than in the palette. It gives a much more natural look if you do that, either letting it mix on the paper wet in wet or else um, coming back in and doing um, layers of paint one on top of the other because if you choose transparent watercolours, you will always be able to go over the top of something and change the colour in a subtle way once it's dry without losing any of the original colour. So more paint, more um, sap green here with a little touch of um, quinacridone gold in it to change the colour. I like to keep one side of the painting warmer, so more yellowish, and the other side more bluish, um, just to give a, a good optical effect. And um, that's, that's a good tip. So we're just getting the dandelions in here. A little bit more shadow there on the flowers. Once they're dry, I'll come in with some quinacridone gold and strengthen the, the brightness of those. And uh, these dots and dashes will just bleed into the colour underneath and blend in nicely. And now I'm starting the negative painting, going around the rabbit, and I'm just picking up random um, amounts of quinacridone gold and sap green, and I'm just outlining, basically and um, giving the effect of him standing in a meadow. And now you can see his ears start to come into view as we paint around the outside edges and just softening the edge of the paint there with an almost clean brush and dragging the colour up into the um, higher part of the paper there. And I've added a little bit of cobalt blue to the green now because as I said I do like to keep one side of the painting a little bit bluer than the other and that will also contrast nicely with the yellow of the dandelions to have a little bit of bluish green behind so that I'm doing the same way outlining the rabbit and then just drawing in some grasses and stems in the background there just to give a bit of variety to the background and uh, keeping that a little bit on the blue side now going back to the other side and doing the same thing with some grasses and I'm painting into the wet paint that I've just put there behind the rabbit allowing that to, to soften. Those, those lines won't stand out very much because they will tend to bleed into the paint. Now this is just the first layer and I will be coming back in with more paint to um, give a stronger impression of the background. In two stages, I'm going to be adding um, wet in wet and then after it's dried, I'll come back in with a little bit of wet on dry. And now the rabbit is dry, so I'm reinforcing some of the shadowy areas on the bunny. 
under his chin is quite important. Never be afraid to use your finger, it won't kill you. If you uh, need to get something off the painting quickly, or you've made a mistake. Uh, increasing the shadow inside his ears. Always keeping a very light touch because you don't really want to uh, make this too dark because you don't want to end up with a grey rabbit. So it's always tempting to go too far, so try to restrain yourself. A couple of lines scraped in there with a fingernail. You might wonder why my hands are always so mucky and I have no nails. Well, that's because I'm an artist. I can't help it. <laughs> I often wonder how people manage to keep their nails and hands so beautifully manicured, etc. if they really are painters because I've certainly never been able to manage that. My hands are my lifeblood, so to speak. They work hard for a living and uh, that's the way it's always been. Okay, so the painting is now dry. The first stage is dry and see how everything has died back quite significantly. Now is the time to come in and paint wet on dry and I've got some sap green here again. I am limiting my palette. This is a very limited palette. I like to paint with a limited palette. It doesn't make the paintings dull. In fact, if anything, it makes them far more pleasing and striking to the eye. So we're just bringing in sap green now and it's going over the previous layer, which is dry, and of course bringing out the colour that's underneath by emphasising it and, and giving lots more nuances and shades of colour. And just dragging it out and emphasising the idea of grasses growing behind him in his little meadow there where he is. That's sap green and quinacridone gold. And in a minute I'm going to rediscover his tail which has got lost there in the uh, painting process. Never fear, his tail is here. And this is brilliant because outlining like this you can refine the shape of the rabbit's body at the last stage like this. So if you have got him a little bit wrong you can, you can put him right at this point and it looks like you meant to do that all along. And just softening the edges, doing lost and found there to make the paint um, look more naturally blended. A little bit of sap green here again in the front, thinking about how to um, shape his face. The characteristic blunt nose of the rabbit, we don't want to lose that. He needs to be nice and rabbity. The important thing to remember is to soften off the edges so that you get that nice blended look. Now a little bit more um, shadow there with Potter's Pink and Cobalt Blue uh, in between his paws. And I've gone from my large round, I only painted with two brushes here, a small round, I think it's a number five or seven, and uh, doesn't really matter whatever you're comfortable with, and a, a larger one, a 10, 11 or 12, just putting in the little indentations in his feet where his claws sit. And I'm going to use pencil to do his whiskers. I sometimes use a pen but because this is a white rabbit and um, quite high key so it's it's quite light the whole thing is tonally quite light I think that would be too um, I don't know it would not work so I'm going to use pencil for his whiskers and his eyebrows which is going to mean that I have to wait for the background paint to dry before I can put in the whiskers on the other side of his head so that would be one of the final stages so I'm just making his eye a little bit bigger and shaping it up a little bit better so he looks uh, a very friendly little bunny, making his nose marks a little bit darker. You can come back in at any point and, and redraw anything that you feel has faded down too much, just add a little bit of paint once it's dry, it will always work. And now the third layer of um, transparent veil painting here on the insides of the ears. This is Potter's Pink and you can see how useful this colour is because you can take it straight from the palette 
and if you put water with it and make it nice and dilute, you've got a very soft colour with which to do your modelling of your shadows and the shapes. You don't have to constantly worry about mixing up a, a particular shade of lilac. Last time I painted this rabbit, I didn't have potter's pink, so it was more difficult and less successful, but this works really well. Depending on the amount of experience you have, you may or may not want to um, work as hard as this on your different shadows and so on and so forth. You can simplify this quite a lot by just keeping to one layer of paint. You don't have to come back and intensify the shadows, etc. Because quite early on this was quite an acceptable little bunny. And it's a technique that you can use with children as well because once you've got the sketch down, painting the greenery behind the rabbit, putting in his eye and his nose, and then just a little bit of shadow on the rabbit in one or two places, and you've got quite a convincing bunny. So don't be afraid to give it a try, even if you think that you're not very experienced. You can't really go very far wrong. And now I'm just dropping in a few yellow flowers in the background there, and um, you can see that I've emphasized the dandelions as well. just a little bit more green around the important part of his ears to make sure they stand out nicely. And we're coming very close to the end. Of this painting. It would make a very nice little gift for somebody for Easter. You could paint this on a card or give it to somebody as a painting to frame and hang up in a bedroom, be ideal in a baby's room, um, or a lovely Easter card, last minute gift. I'll take a moment here to thank everybody for their support so far. Uh, if you are happy with this video and you enjoyed it, I'd be very grateful if you would give me a like and if you aren't already subscribed, please do. Click the bell for notifications so you automatically get notified when a new video goes up. We do try to put up a video every day. It doesn't actually work every day, but uh, most days there'll be something coming up. And um, you don't want to miss anything, do you? Don't forget to go to the community tab as well, and I post things in there from time to time. Um, at the end of the month, I do a draw for um, a prize for people who have commented throughout the month. Everybody is automatically entered, and uh, a random draw is done to pick somebody who receives one of my original paintings. So that will be notified on the community post um, later today or tomorrow. Last final touches to the bunny rabbit's eye and any minute now I'm going to call him done and I'm going to say thank you very much for being with me today and I will see you again soon and the sun is shining. We have a mini heat wave here today. It's supposed to be going up to 26 degrees which is quite unusual in the spring in Brittany. So going to be too hot to paint in the studio this afternoon. So there's the bunny, all done, ready to go. So bye bye for now everybody, bye bye. <laughs>